Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello friends, welcome back to the online series in this course Introduction to Science Fiction Studies. In this course we have talked about a lot of elements and aspects of science fiction including the big three authors, the Indian authors, women and non-binary authors, all of these things then compiled along with all the other aspects of science fiction like time travel, space travel, eugenics, genetic engineering, cloning. We have discussed a whole universe of all of these materials, the science fiction universe. That is what the entire cosmos uh, boiled down into the human imagination looks like. So now in this particular lecture, we are going to come across a very interesting subject that is the video games. I'm sure all of you at certain point of time or the other have played video games with the help of a mobile phone, with the help of a personal computer, even uh, with the help of a separate device, a PlayStation, a gaming console. There are a lot of instruments that are available in the market. There are a lot of devices which are available in the market which constitute the hardware of the entire gaming universe. So, what does science fiction has to do with video games? Is there any connection? Is the science fiction part inside the hardware component of the video game, the software component of the video game, the story of the video game? So before we move on, let us first understand the culture of video games. About the video game culture. So this is the first point. If we have a clarity in this particular stage, then we will be able to connect the dots of science fiction and bring it in a full circle around the video game culture. Alright, so let us start with a very fascinating fact about the video game culture. World Economic Forum published an article by Stephen Hall. Chair, chair means chair professor, game design department, associate professor of game design, High Point University, North Carolina, USA. So in America, there is a particular department which is completely devoted to game designing. I'm sure you understand game designing, the um, environment, the characters, the software, all of these things are a part of the game designing team. So they have softwares which design the visual environment that you will see when you enter the game. The options that are given to you is a part of the programming process, programming, computer programming of course, which includes coding, which will again give you input and output relations which will take you to input and output relations and thereby input devices and output devices of the computers. So all of these taken into account together form the department of uh, game designing. They handle it all. Okay, And uh, Stephen Hall here is the chair of that game design department in the university, High Point University, North Carolina. So what he came up with in 2022 the global game video market annual revenues of US 159 billion dollars. See this is the annual turnover that, that this is the annual revenue they generated that is this is the money they received after they launched the games into the market across hardware, software and services. Services is like you buy the game, you buy the 
things that are the, the cheat codes, the uh, other elements in the game. Suppose you are in a game and you want to play some premium quality um, points in the game, you want to gain some money, you want to gain some privileges, you pay for it, right? So that is the services that we are talking about. So all of these things included this particular culture, this particular industry of video games, they generated a revenue of 159 billion. So many zeros, you'll perhaps be not able to count. See. This is a hundred, this is a million, and this is a billion. So a billion dollars, not a billion dollars, 159 billion dollars. So many zeros, that is nine zeros and after that three numbers. So that is the amount of revenue this gaming industry generated in 2020. And this is 2023. Three times, so now this figure over here that we have, this is three times the size of the global music industry, art, literature, culture, music. So the music industry, which is considered one of the um, you know, most popular industry there is, they could not generate as much revenue as the gaming division generated. That is, they have generated three times the global music industry and four times that of the film industry in 29. Can you imagine? Nowadays, we think that film industry is the most booming industry on this planet. But the culture of video game is so much ingrained in all the populace. Even those who do not watch movies, who do not listen to music, they play games. So, this particular industry, it has generated thrice the revenue of the music industry and four times the revenue of the film industry. So that is the impact. This is the impact of the gaming division, the gaming culture on the common people. So initially, let us start with the discussion of how the games, what were the gaming setup, what was the gameplay in the beginning. The initial form was victory or winning conditions. So either when you enter a game, you have a plan, right? A plan is set out for you. You have to win some points. You have to go through a multiple tasks, tasks completion kind of thing. And then you uh, fight. Gaming also has this component of fighting and running away and escaping, not fighting enemies always, fighting the infrastructure, fighting the uh, particular setup. You are looking for a treasure hunt, so you have to fight with the, all the mechanics of the place. So all of these things are there. So if you are uh, looking at a, a particular gemstone, uh, which is right in front of your character, so you have to jump over a fire, a place where fire is burning. So that is also a fighting strategy. So there after when you jump over that, you gain that particular gemstone and it is a winning condition. And then you also get scores. Uh, I'm sure all of us, you know, those who are born in the 90s, they will remember playing games like Mario, then Dave, then Hercules. Uh, these are some of the games where you, of course, in mobile, you have Temple Run. Then you have Candy Crush. Candy Crush is one of the most popular games there is. And very recently, you have PUBG. Uh, PUBG we will be talking about a little later because uh, this is not in the initial form. Initial form games were mostly about this. Then you have Subway Surfers. These are some of the very popular games which gives you points. You go, you collect points and uh, then you are uh, winning, winning those points, okay, scoring those points. And when there was Windows 98, there was a very popular game, Prince of Persia. You have a movie in that name right now, Prince of Persia, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. So this was the initial condition of the games. They had scoring points, they have winning strategies. Finally, what happened? Scoring mechanism or a final boss fight. So you are fighting with other opponents, other characters, uh, which are computer programmed. There 
and then after you win through a certain stage you go and get to a final boss fight so you are fighting with the final character um, where you either if you win then you win the game if you lose then you lose the game so this was the preliminary condition the other forms that gradually emerged evolved from this was the card playing games the billiard games the carom uh, the sudoku the puzzle games the adventure games all of these games started to emerge so we have puzzle solving object finding okay these are the kind of games then you have uh, strategy games that you have to plan a strategy then you will have uh, games like storyboarding you will have adventure games where you will be given with a task or you will undertake an adventure of jumping off a cliff of course in the virtual reality so all of these have uh, evolved from this earlier initial game play only the if you remember there in the nokia in the basic mobile phone of nokia you had a game called snakes where uh, a particular there were three compartments attached to each other and they were roaming around in this particular environment you will have a compartment blinking over here you will guide this particular body and it will go and attach to this compartment and then you will be moving around. This is the earliest kind of gameplay that we can imagine and then the other forms we have just talked about evolved. Now what is the one of the latest important forms of gameplay that is is interactive experience. You are interacting with the computer. The computer has some inputs to give, you have some responses to give and thereby the computer will take you ahead. This kind of thing you can find in one of the Netflix series called Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch is a kind of a movie which is shot in multiple storylines that is when the movie is ongoing it will give you a point uh, an option to select what happens after this and it is very grotesque really because somewhere you are given the option that you kill the person or you go out of the room and the player uh, whoever is uh, seeing that movie is interacting with that movie it is most possible that the person is going to see what happens if I ask this character to kill the person so it is also a kind of um, delving deep into the human psyche the human psyche where human beings have an innate desire for causing evil so that is again a psychoanalytical part of the game we will discuss it some other time so interactive experiences are something like that then in India very recently there a game has been launched very similar to that of Bandersnatch which is Raji Raji is a small girl child which is completely animated and in Indian setting. Uh, this also gives the players an interactive experience. So one of the things that keeps the gaming industry within a particular boundary, a limit, is the platform. That is either you are playing the game in a PC or you are playing the game in a console, gaming console or you have a video game device which is used to be very popular you know 20 years earlier when everybody could not afford a desktop or a laptop so during that time platform was very important all of the games were not available for pc some of the games were available only for the consoles companies like sony nintendo these were japanese companies and they took over the market very easily they produced some of the games which could only be played on their particular device outside which they couldn't be played so this kept the gaming industries in check for some time then what happened was that most of the things were assembled most of the hardware components that are required for gaming was assembled into computers and that is what we called graphics card 
Nowadays, if you want to have a gaming computer, you need to have a graphics card installed in it. Without it, the computer will not be able to run the game. So graphics card, a good deal of RAM memory, random access memory. It should be not less than 16 GB. This is what the standard of the industry is now. Unless and until you have a computer system with these configurations, you will not be able to play. This is also a limitation of the gaming industry. Now we will move on to the last point, which is what purpose does this serve? Is there any positive purpose to it? Is the gaming industry doing us any good? Yes, science communication. Science communication is a term which is very uh, popular nowadays. That is, uh, those who are not exactly uh, inside the field of scientific studies, they can also approach very interesting subjects of science like astrophysics, cosmology. So all of these could be addressed through science communication that somebody from that field will explain all of the scientific phenomena relating to the cosmology and astrophysics in very layman's terms, in very simple words. Thereby, you as a person, while you are gaming, you will be educated. You will get to know what are the terms that are there which are used in the astrophysicist community. So engaging and educating players about scientific concepts. If the game is including a scientific concept, then you will be uh, knowing about it, what it is, how it is uh, happening in nature, what are the science and technological developments attached to that subject. So all of those things are included. So science communication is the person who is gaming, the person who is a player is getting all sorts of information communicated from the game to the uh, game player. Then we have futuristic technologies and the wonders of the universe. Mostly what happens in games which include science fiction as a part of the narration. Narration means every game has a story. So the story if the story can includes some kind of science fiction element, some kind of futuristic element, then the person who is playing will be aware of these sorts of elements. Before moving ahead, we will have another look at this concept, futuristic technologies. Futuristic technologies might include space travel, time travel, through wormholes, using black holes, and of course portal guns. All of these things become a part of futuristic technologies. We have always seen, you know, ammunitions and guns which we have never seen in real life. They do not exist. For example, uh, guns which emit beta rays, gamma rays, which are, um, you know, and then lightsabers. All of these things, uh, laser guns, these are things of the future. We do not use them in uh, the battle strategies nowadays. It is not available for ammunition for in ammunition industries but in these kind of video games you will find this kind of technologies the wonders of the universe in this point we will be very much surprised to know that the games that we will discuss in this lecture you will see they are mostly set throughout the galaxy they cover a range you know which is thousand light years and all because they have this futuristic technology of hyper jump warp drives uh, space travel in uh, faster than light technologies, faster than light propulsion systems. So everywhere you go into the gaming universe uh, that we are going to discuss nowadays, the science fiction element is mostly based on some star, some planet, some asteroid, something is happening in some uh, moon or uh, some um, phys physical phenomena that is taking place in a nebula. All of these things become a part of the uh, science fiction universe, right? So after this, uh, when we talk about the video game culture, it is also a part of science communication. That is science explained to the gamers in a very easy way, in a storyboarding kind of fashion. Now we will discuss 
some things about the video games which are very common yet uncommon to academically oriented people so there is something called genre up until this time we discussed genres strictly related to the film of literature art what happened we discussed that genre is okay it is a tragedy it is a comedy it is a novel it is a romance novel it is a gothic novel it is a science fiction novel science fiction story all these are genres right so we also discussed that speculative fiction is a a, a kind of fiction which has a uh, fantastical elements in it and science fiction is a subgenre of speculative fiction right so whenever we discuss science fiction as a subgenre of speculative fiction we are considering speculative fiction as a prominent genre so the first things first let us consider what are the uh, genres that are there in the video gaming community first of all action games second is role playing game then there is shoot them up games rogue like games battle royale games grand theft auto clones now we will get to know each of these genres one by one action games are those where the protagonist where the player is actually performing some kind of action is fighting with somebody is stay, is going on an adventure so they are not like mind games or puzzle games they are doing a particular action role playing games is that you become a certain character in a story the story is about a person who uh, so meets an alien and there is a fight with the alien forces so there you become that person in the story you fight the alien becoming a part of the story so that is role playing shoot them up it is a shooter game shooter game means you are given a gun and you are supposed to shoot the characters who appear you are given the data that these are the villains these are the people you have to kill then you go inside the game universe and then you kill those characters those are called shoot them up uh, genre rogue likes is a is a play where uh, you will be very um, familiar with this word vice city vice city is you are any other pedestrian you are any other person inside a virtual city you are going inside you are stealing cars you are killing people you are uh, going into a bar getting into a bar brawl all of these things are happening you are uh, fighting with the police you are doing that you are breaking the law and the, finally if the police catches you then you are busted then it is game over then battle royale games this is a typical uh, battle strategy games where the gameplay is last man standing it can be a multiplayer game there can be many characters many players fighting with each other and at the end only one person will be there who is standing so that is called battle royal it actually i have kept this in caps this also in caps because there is a game which is called the battle royal and therefore all the games which are modeled on this particular game are called battle royale games finally you have grand theft auto clones so grand theft auto is again a game where you are stealing cars and riding them throughout a virtual space this is something which um, give rise to many other popular games in this uh, particular era these are few genre there are many other genres of course there is racing games there is simulation games i have not discussed them because they are uh, somewhat sub genres of this particular games like racing games is a part of this action game then simulation is like role playing so these are sub genres moving on to the mode of the game playing that is single player perspective interactive if you are a single player inside the gameplay then either 
you have a perspective of the first person or the third person. In case you are the first person, so in front of the screen, you will only see two hands, one of which will be carrying a weapon, one of which will be carrying something else. So whenever you move through the game, those hands will be right in front of your screen and you will be looking as if you are inside the character and your point of view is the character's point of view. This is the first person perspective. What happens with the third person perspective? There is another perspective called the third person perspective. That is, you actually see the character in front of you moving around here and there. So what happens in the uh, third person perspective is that you can see the character moving around you. The entire body of the character is visible to you. So there you don't see just a pair of hands. You actually see the character climbing the stairs. You see the character moving out. You see the character pick up stuff. So those are the third person perspective. Interactive is, like we discussed, the characters interact with you. The characters in the gameplay, which may be other players around that same particular game universe, they are interacting with you. But in single player, because in single player, you are the only uh, human component, then these interactive things will be computer based. Or nowadays, they will be the AI. Right? So, moving on to multiplayer games, I'm sure all of us are aware of the game called um, Counter Strike, where three or four people make a group and they uh, accomplish a mission. So, games like Counter Strike. Then nowadays, the very popular PUBG. All these are multiplayer games. There are multiple people inside the game at the same time. Then there is something called zero player. You will be very fascinated to know that this particular idea is the idea of a mathematician and physicist. I would ask you to go and research about this zero player gameplay. That is, there is only one kind of input than the, that the person will give and based on that, the game will run on its own. It's a very interesting concept. You can go and have a look at it. Then there is cooperative and team based gameplay. So cooperative and team based gameplays are again part of the multiplayer kind of game uh, gameplays where you and your friends, they log into the same game universe and they play as a team. It can be uh, characters who are fighting the same evil boss or same evil power or it, it can be the same uh, characters moving out in the same universe, collecting the same things, solving the same puzzle, right? Then there is asymmetric gameplay. Uh, PUBG is also a kind of asymmetric gameplay that if you do not wish to form a team, you can always play the game on your own. That is, there will be other characters logging into the same account in the same universe, other uh, gamers in the same universe, but they will not be in contact with you. They will just be uh, there uh, and they will do their own work. They will try to find their own treasure. You do it on your own. So this is asymmetric gameplay. Having known all those interesting facts about gaming, let us now move into the science fiction elements of the video game culture. These science fiction based video games are, I have selected the top 10 of the science fiction based video games so that you know what are the aspects of science fiction that these video games explore. Number one is Mass Effect, very influential when it was released people were uh, you know sort of became a fan of this particular video game it was developed by bioware a company a rich science fiction universe is of course over there role playing video game because we have already studied what are role playing video games so you become a character now we will know what this character does in this particular game a human protagonist who leads a team of diverse characters on a mission to save the galaxy from a threat known as the Reapers. 
a highly advanced machine race intent on wiping out all organic life. So it is again very much relatable to our fear of actually getting annihilated by the machines, the artificial intelligence that we are creating. Only this is uh, sort of set in a cosmic level where we have gone and found other planets. We have identified that this is a race of machines and then now we are fighting the race uh, of machines. So the second one in this series is Halo. Halo has multiple, so when I refer to them as series, that means there is Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, Mass Effect 4, all these things are uh, kind of story evolutions, when the story evolved, so after Mass Effect 1, then only you know how the story progresses in Mass Effect 2, then after you have complete that game, then only you know how the story progresses in Mass Effect 3. So in Halo series also the same thing happens. We the latest I think is Halo 5 or Halo 6. So that is the popularity of these kind of games. Created by Bungie, Bungie is a company and later continued by 344 Industries. 344 Industries is another uh, company. First person shooter franchising. So this game is a shooting game, first person shooting. So you are there standing over there uh, with a gun in your hand, a sniper rifle or uh, other sorts of uh, ammunitions. In the 26th century, so this is the science fiction storyline that is given to this game. Humanity has expanded into space and established colonies on various planets. The conflict between humanity and an alliance of the alien races known as the Covenant. So humanity has gone into space and not only that, they have colonized other planets. The idea of colonization, it strictly means that you uh, belong to a particular place, then you go to another place, you then um, actually plant something crops trees and then you, the trees or crops grow in that place that is actually the political the legal understanding of colonization once you are able to do that you have officially colonized that place so um, established colonies on various planets the conflict between humanity and an alliance of alien races so there is a conflict between some of the alien races conflict means with some of the aliens humanity is fighting and there is the idea of alliances with some of the aliens humanity is very okay so in this case humanity is fighting both the situation known as the covenant so covenant is the name of the alien race half life series this has also uh, been very influential in uh, promoting science fiction elements among young uh, gamers. Developed by Valve Corporation, a first person shooter game. Again, this is a shooter game. During an experiment gone awry, awry means wrong or unexpected. An interdimensional rift is opened, unleashing a catastrophic alien invasion and triggering a resonance cascade. So this particular experiment that is, was being conducted on the earth, while this experiment was going on, there was unexpected outcome, something went wrong and an interdimensional portal was opened. That means there was a kind of discontinuity in the time space fabric, time space fabric, that is right. You have heard this term when I was discussing time and uh, space in science fiction. So time travel, space travel in science fiction, there we had discussed about this time space fabric. When this fabric was jeopardized, some of the alien races, some of the dangerous alien races which lived billions and billions of light years from us, they happened to come and invade Earth. So we are going to go and shoot the aliens, right? Then we have Deuce X series created by Ironstorm 
and Idios Montreal. This is a role playing and stealth gameplay. Stealth means you are playing, the gamer who is going to play this game is actually a character in the game who is hiding and moving around in that particular environment. The story of Adam Jensen, a security chief at a biotechnology company in a dystopian future. We have discussed about the word dystopia, especially in a devoted lecture. So if you want to understand further, you can just go back and check that lecture on dystopia. After a terrorist attack leaves him critically injured, Jensen undergoes cybernetic enhancement to survive. Jensen is injured during a terrorist attack and after that he is, um, he is experimented on in this biotechnology laboratory and he is given cybernetic enhancement that is if he does not have an arm then he is given a robotic arm, he is missing a leg then he is given a robotic leg. So, they are trying to um, come up with an idea of the uh, prosthetics and science fiction and robotics all together combined in a particular uh, universe, a dystopian future, right? So next we have Fallout series developed by Interplay Entertainment and later by Bethesda Game Studio. A devastating, this is the storyline, a devastating nuclear war known as the Great War which occurs in 2077, that means it is a futuristic uh, situation, resulting in the destruction of most of the civilization. So the civilization on this planet gets destroyed during this 2077 nuclear war. Players emerge from underground vaults known as vaults. So the players have gone into a cryogenic sleep. We will discuss cryogenic right after this. When the game opens, the players are actually inside this particular story already. So the civilization has been destroyed, there has been a nuclear war and you are waking up from the cryogenic sleep and seeing the destroyed uh, civilization into a world ravaged by radiation, mutated creatures and warring factors. So the world that the sleeper wakes into has is completely different from the world they lived. So cryogenic stasis is a kind of freezing of a human being in such a way, freezing of a life form in such a way that they do not age, that time stops for them. So when that stasis is broken, when cryogenic uh, sleep is done, then they wake up just the age they fell asleep. So this is a science fiction concept. I'm sure you must have known the idea uh, that is behind the character of Captain America. That is exactly what we are referring to over here, cryogenic sleep. Mutated creatures, so because there is a nuclear uh, war that had happened, so radiation is everywhere and when there is radiation, there is mutation. And warring factors, warring factions, that there are multiple factions, multiple groups of individuals, some are with the party that is uh, in favor of the war, some are against the party that is in favor of the war. So there are multiple factions and resistance factions who are fighting amongst each other. So this is the setting of this Fallout series. Then Starcraft series developed by Blizzard Entertainment, a real-time strategy game set in a futuristic space opera universe. We have discussed what's a space opera. Again, I am telling you to remind you that space opera is a kind of epic universe where the people, the characters belong to multiple planets, the travel is from one galaxy to another galaxy. There is interstellar travel, interplanetary travel, there is tragedy, there is war, there is loss. So it is an entire uh, setup of human existence only it is blown into the entire universe. So all the characters, they uh, are part of different galaxies and universe. So that is space opera featuring three distinct factions, that is groups of people and intense multiplayer gameplay. So this is an intense multiplayer gameplay that means at least a hundred players can log in inside that same gaming environment and can play the same game at the same time. A story revolves around 
Apterans, a resourceful and human-like species. The Zerg, a relentless and insect-like swarm of biological creatures. And the Protoss, a highly advanced and enigmatic alien race with psionic abilities. So now psionic is again a very interesting term. It is a kind of, you know, relationship with the psychology and uh, mind reading, letting people, it, it is a kind of mind manipulation system. So this particular alien race, they have this advanced thing about psionic, psionic and they can manipulate the minds of other characters in the gameplay. Then we have Metroid series developed by Nintendo. Again, I refer to Nintendo. It is one of the oldest gaming companies. Metroid follows the adventures of Samus Aran, a bounty hunter battling space pirates and extraterrestrial threats in a unique blend of exploration and action. So science fiction of space travel is blended with the genres of action and adventure and fighting of uh, pirates, all of these things are um, amalgamated together to form this Metroid series. Portal series, this is a very recent series which has been, I probably it was released somewhere around 2016 or 2017 or maybe before that 2014, developed by Valve Corporation, a puzzle platformer, use of the Aperture Science handle handheld portal device or simply the portal gun. So the character over here is um, in a single player. You will be given a gun which you will be holding. So in front of you, you will have two hands and a gun in your hand. This gun is not a shooting gun. It's a portal creating gun. That is if you shoot it at a particular surface, it will open a portal. When you go through that, you will come to a different part of that structure or that game. So now you have to find your way back, which creates linked portals on flat surfaces, manipulate physics, solve puzzles and navigate through various test chambers within the Aperture Science Enrichment Center, a vast and mysterious research facility. So this game generally works on the concept of wormholes. If you want to know more about wormholes, you can just go back to the space travel and science fiction lecture that we had discussed earlier. Then you have Doom series, created by id Software. It is a first-person shooter franchise set on a Martian research facility. See, the Union Aerospace Corporation. This is the name of the facility in Mars, where experiments with teleportation technology inadvertently open a gateway to hell. Players take on the role of the Doomslayer, a mission to combat demonic forces from hell that invade Mars and Earth. So in this gameplay, the entire thing is set in Mars. In Mars, there is a colony, there is a research facility where an experiment goes wrong and a portal to hell. Again, there is science fiction element. There is also the element of religion because heaven and hell are completely religion constructs. So science fiction, when it comes in contact with religion, they have this kind of storyline where a portal opens up to hell or heaven. So Doom series is the aliens or the creatures from hell, they come and uh, fight with the human beings on Earth and on Mars. And you as a character have to shoot them down. Now we will discuss a little bit about the Indian science fiction game scenario. I'm sure you must be wondering, is it even possible? But let me tell you that only very recently this year, we have had our first science fiction video game, which is yet to be launched, but the pre-booking has already begun. In this battle royal. It is inspired by Indian culture and mythology. So a software, a game software designing company based in Pune, Maharashtra, they have come up with this entire idea of Indus Battle Royal. It is a kind of a battle royal game. We have discussed that it is a last man standing gameplay. It incorporates this kind of gameplay. 
and Indus is the name for the Indus Valley Civilization. So the game is completely set in an Indian setting. It has all the cultural references to India. It has the landscape designed according to the Indian scenario. But the time setting is Indus Valley Civilization. However, there are elements of science fiction in it. Where are the elements of science fiction? This is exactly in Indo-Futurism, a futuristic world that is unapologetically Indian in its exploration and representation of science fiction. When Hindustan Times was reporting this game for the first time, they used the word unapologetically because sometimes we believe that Indians being uh, not so technologically advanced, we feel a kind of apology due to the entire human race. But that is not the case. This game is going to change the way people look at India, Indian culture and civilization and technological advancements, because this game is going to talk about uh, an Indo-futurism where India has become the fastest technologically advancing societies on this planet. So what is Indo-futurism? A utopia where India is the most technologically advanced. So utopia is again an imaginary state, imaginary place, imaginary time where things are going very well. Everybody is happy, everybody is in shared situation kind of thing. They are sharing property, they are sharing responsibilities, they are sharing duties. So in this entire universe of utopia, India has advanced so much so that they are the most advanced civilization on this planet. Now, I will be uh, very brutal in pointing this out that the inspiration about creating this gameplay does not lie with India actually. It lies with the story of Wakanda. Wakanda is an imaginary place which first came up in Marvel Universe with the characters of Black Panther. When you see the Avengers movie or you see the other movies, you will see that um, there is the concept of Wakanda, a country in Africa, which has primitive races, but their technology is so much advanced that even the US government, the so-called the most technologically advanced country or the Japanese government or the Japanese civilization who are claimed to be the most uh, applied technologically uh, sound uh, civilization, even they fall short of the um, advancements happening in Wakanda. And Wakanda, in order to keep their advancement out of the reach of the evil people of the world, they are secretly doing it. That is the idea of Wakanda. So this Indo-Futurism is actually an inspiration from that story. But Having said all of that, India is still, is yet to gather firm ground. But having said all that, India is yet to gather firm ground in science fiction storyline gaming industry. Yet, because Indus is not released, Indus Battle Royale, it is not released till now and it is um, probably, we are guessing it will be released by the end of this year. This is the only game on science fiction. This is the only thing that is based on science fiction, right? So if we want to think of India as a gaming community, as a place where uh, science communication happens through gaming, we will have to wait for a few more years perhaps. But in this battle royal is a very good starting point. Now it is our quiz time and we must think and answer. Let us go through the uh, quiz and let us evaluate ourselves, uh, ourselves whether we are able to uh, answer all the questions or not. Let's see. Video games, like literature and art, do have genres. Do we agree on that? Yes, we do. They have genres. Write a note on the various genres of video games. This will be a consummate kind of thing. Once you have prepared your notes on this, you will never forget it. And trust me, you will be able to appreciate the gaming industry as well. There are a lot of common themes in the science fiction video games. Identify and list them. The science fiction video games that we have just talked about, there are a lot of common themes. Let me tell you themes 
not we are not talking about characters we are not talking about storyline we are not talking about the science fiction experiments or the uh, elements we are strictly talking about themes themes of resistance themes of uh, recovery themes of uh, winning uh, strategy so these are the themes that there are so you can make a list what are the common science fiction elements in the video game storylines we have discussed so far so in this question you answer what are the elements like space travel we have alien encounters we have portal guns we have the wormhole concepts we have the hyperjump concepts all of those things you include in this answer what is indo futurism we just discussed what is indo futurism a couple of minutes ago how is gaming associated with the concept so indian indo futurism please connect it with the concept of gaming make separate list of science fiction video games based on their mode so mode we have discussed single player multiplayer interactive then you have zero player uh, all of these are modes so try to understand how many characters can play how they are playing is it asymmetrical is it uh, team based so you can uh, just categorize them according to their modes how does science fiction video games play a role in science communication so now this is the place where you discuss about the purpose of purpose of including science fiction as a part of the video game universe or the video game storyline create your own storyline and idea of a video game so now this is something metacognitive and you will have to apply your knowledge of video game and your knowledge of science fiction so far so that you can create a storyline and uh, perhaps sell it to a company let's see what happens this is a list of references it will help you understand the, the gaming culture and science fiction put together i have given you the article you know link where we have discussed about uh, indus battle royal that is the uh, india times link then you have this uh, particular website where there are uh, there the science fiction games are listed you can just go and have a look at them stephen hall how covid 19 is taking gaming and esports to the next level in this we come to know about the economic a situation of gaming industry the thing that we started this lecture with neil roger tringham this is one of the most famous books there is about science fiction and gaming then you have mega structures super weapons and global architectures in science fiction computer games this is also a very important research paper you can go and have a lot of ideas gather a lot of ideas from gaming and lastly you have capel matthew wilhelm capel's video gaming in science fiction a critical study in this book you will find the science fiction component more than in the other articles or books thank you very much for watching this lecture i hope we have learned and discussed a lot about video games i'm sure after right after this lecture you're going to go and google and play some games if they are available for free and if you have the uh, adequate software and hardware requirements enjoy and see you in the next lecture Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Today we are going to read a section from Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando. And the section that we are going to listen to today is perhaps one of the finest descriptions of the winter season in English literature. It is also a very fine piece of what we call fantasy writing. I have made a few changes to the original to adapt it for the purpose of reading.
The great frost was, historians tell us, the most severe that has ever visited these islands. Birds froze in mid-air and fell like stones to the ground. At Norwich, a young countrywoman started to cross the road in her usual robust health and was seen by the onlookers to turn visibly to powder and be blown in a puff of dust over the roofs. The mortality among sheep and cattle was enormous. Corpses froze and could not be drawn from the sheets. It was no uncommon sight to come upon a whole herd of swine frozen immovable upon the road. The fields were full of shepherds, plowmen, teams of horses and little birds carrying boys all struck stark in the act of the moment. One with his hand to his nose, another with a bottle to his lips, a third with a stone raised to throw at the ravens who sat upon the hedge within a yard of him as if they were stuffed birds. The severity of the frost was so extraordinary that a kind of petrification sometimes ensued. It was commonly supposed that the great increase of rocks in some parts of Derbyshire was due to no eruption, for there was no eruptions. Rather, it was supposed that they were due to the solidification of unfortunate wayfarers who had been turned literally to stones where they stood. The church could give little help in the matter, and though some landowners had these relics blessed, the most part preferred to use them either as landmarks, scratching posts for sheep, or when the form of the stone allowed, drinking troughs for cattle, which purpose they serve admirably for the most part to this day. But while the country people suffered the extremity of want and the trade of the country was at a standstill, London enjoyed a carnival of utmost brilliance. The new king directed that the reef river, which was frozen to a depth of 20 feet, should be swept, decorated and given all the semblance of a park or pleasure ground, with arbors, mazes, alleys, drinking booths, all at his expense, of course. Frozen roses fell in showers when the queen and her ladies walked abroad. Colored balloons hovered motionless in the air. Here and there burnt vast bonfires of cedar and oak wood, lavishly salted so that the flame were of green, orange and purple fire. But however fiercely they burnt, the heat was not enough to melt the ice, which, though of singular transparency, was yet of the hardness of steel. So clear, indeed, was the ice that there could be seen congealed at a depth of several feet, here a porpoise, there a flounder. Shoals of eels lay motionless in a trance, but whether their state was one of death or merely of suspended animation, which uh, the warmth would revive, puzzled the philosophers. In short, nothing could exceed the brilliancy and gaiety of the scene by day. But it was at night that the carnival was at its merriest. The nights were of perfect stillness. The moon and stars blazed with the heart fixed in and to the music of flute and trumpet the courtier danced. See you.
of literary snippet.